and then they get this beautiful black and yellow as they get older. It's okay, buddy. I'm gonna go ahead and set this guy down because he seems like he's freaking out. Hey, good morning, everybody. Welcome to the vlog. I really, truly hope that you have a great day. You know, the last couple days have definitely been a bit of a downer on this vlog, and you guys know that I always try to keep things upbeat, and I try to keep things positive, and I try to live my life that way. But the truth is, is that I want to continue to just share my life as it is with you guys. You know, I understand there's a lot of YouTubers, and in particular vloggers, that actually kind of give you a little slice of their life, and they keep a lot of things out. And that's that's not to say that I'm going to share everything in my life with you guys, but I want to be as open as possible. I want to know from you guys if that's okay, you know? Yeah, we had a couple bad days, and, and it, I'm not saying I'm feeling great right now, but I'm trying to rise up. I'm trying to show you guys and tell myself that it's okay, and it's going to be all right, and we have to get through these issues. The truth is, sometimes this vlog is therapeutic for me. I know sometimes you guys tell me after watching the vlog, you feel better about it. Well, the truth is the same goes for me. You guys help me with your comments, your support, all the interaction we do. It's been amazing. And so today, although I still have kind of a little bit of a dark cloud over me, I am going to push it aside. And I think together we should have an amazing rest of this vlog and try to make this day as good as possible. Again, let's just push everything aside and let's just have some fun together. What do you say? Let me know down in the comments how your day is. Let me know something awesome about you guys because, again, you guys are amazing amazing and I love hearing about you. While you're down there, can you smash that like button for me? What do you say we just jump in and spend some time with some animals? I figured today would be a great day to just show some animals that we're raising up for future breeders. It kind of cheers me up to be around animals and to think, wow, to think that these guys might be future breeders and see what kind of amazing babies they're going to come up with in the future. This happens to be an albino jelly brooks. Now the brooks kings are basically a South Florida king snake and they get relatively large, you know, maybe about six, seven, sometimes even a little bit larger than that. And they're usually a pretty placid animal. And the albino, of course, is a recessive. And then the jelly just kind of makes it look kind of cool. And there's all kinds of cool stuff that goes on with the jelly. I have a handful of other Brooks Kings that I'm raising up too, so I'll show you them too. This is one of my all-time favorite Brooks Kings morphs. And this is an aneurythristic. And actually, a guy named Lloyd Lemke, who is an old-time reptile breeder that a lot of reptile people have never even heard his name before. For. But believe it or not, Lloyd was kind of a pioneer of the reptile hobby. He was one of the guys that I looked up to when I was a kid because he had thousands of snakes when hardly anyone did. He at one point was the largest producer of colubrids in the entire world and he produced the very first aneurythristic Brooks Kings. Now interestingly enough, when I first bought them, and I think I was like the second or third person to ever buy one from Lloyd Lemke, they were really weak. They didn't do well. They kind of had problems feeding his young, a lot of fertility problems when they were bred, but over time we continued to outbreed them and get them into new bloodlines, and now they are unbelievably hardy. They're just as hardy as a wild South Florida king snake, but they have this beautiful kind of dark, kind of bluey look to them. I absolutely love these guys. And you guys know that I'm going to raise up some more Mexican black king snakes. <laughs> look at this guy. This is actually a yearling right now, and she is looking absolutely gorgeous. I tell you what, there is such a demand for Mexican black king snakes. I think they're just the one snake that whenever I post an Instagram picture or post them online or do anything, it's like the one snake that seems to get almost the most response. I mean, people just go crazy over it. It's just the fact that it's just that jet black animal, super glossy, just really, really amazing. So, of course, we're raising up, I don't know, six or eight more of these guys because we have to continue to produce more because no matter how many we produce, as soon as we put up on the website, they are sold within minutes. And I am not kidding you, within minutes of us posting a Mexican black king, it's sold. It is crazy. So, we definitely have some more of these coming up. And then I have a really cool group of these little guys here, California king snakes. But this is actually the black and white or desert version, but it's a high white version. But again, it's an albino. So it happens if it's not albino, it'll have maybe a little bit of black freckling in it. But because it's albino, it's basically solid white. You might see a little bit of pink peeking through here and there, but some of these guys are incredible. Again, this is a polygenic trait, meaning that you just continue to breed the highest white to the highest white to the highest white. This is legitimately probably the 
eighth or tenth generation that we've been breeding these to get better and better animals. And to give you an idea, every generation takes two to three years. So we've literally been working on this project for over 20 years. And ironically enough, this almost looks like the identical snake here, but it couldn't be further from the truth. The truth is this is actually a leucistic Texas rat snake. That's right, that's those ones that are just solid white with the black or sometimes even blue eyes. But this happens to be the albino version or the pink eyed. And this is interesting because what happened way back in the day when people were producing leucistic Texas rats, every now and then what they called the pink eyed leucistic Texas rat snakes would just kind of randomly pop out. And what's interesting is normally you would think like, all right, that's an albino leucistic. Totally makes sense. But there wasn't anyone producing albino Texas rat snakes. So the pink eyed kind of popped out on its own and really to this day the albino Texas rat snakes don't look a whole lot like the eyes on these guys just that kind of really bright pink eyes the albinos and the other version are a little bit darker so I'm really not hundred percent sure what the origins of these guys are but we're raising some up because I've always thought they were cool I could not be more excited with the mangrove snakes that we're working with this year we have five females that are potentially ready to breed and we're gonna start putting them together and hopefully we're gonna produce some of these guys here remember this one when it was just a little baby about a year ago it was literally one of the smallest little things that I've ever seen and look at how big it's getting now Ooh, and it's getting a little bit feisty it's starting to get that adult attitude to it that's for sure what an awesome freaking snake it is and again they're kind of born like brown and tan and then they get this beautiful black and yellow as they get older it's okay buddy I'm gonna go ahead and set this guy down because he seems like he's freaking out and of course we're raising up a whole bunch of really cool corn snakes that I'm super excited about this happens to be what they would call an amber to say Corn. Now the amber is actually a hypo caramel corn snake. So the caramel and the hypo are both recessive mutations. And then the tessera is basically a co-dominant mutation that just makes the pattern all goofy. So we have a whole bunch of corn snakes. It's going to be really cool when these guys get a year or two years old and we can actually start breeding them. Of course, I showed you just the other day when we got these Guiana red tail boas in. Well, this one finally shed. It's its first shed. So right after its birth shed. And holy cow, does that thing look gorgeous. I tell you what, just those widow peaks and saddles are incredible and you can already see a lot of its color coming through as this thing grows up oh my gosh it's gonna be a stunner you guys also might remember these black milk snakes that I got of course you're looking you're going well Brian that's not black at all it looks like any other Honduran milk snake well you're right they do look a lot like a Honduran milk snake right now but it's really darkened up a lot just in the last couple months and in about six or seven months from now this thing is gonna be jet black just like a Mexican black king snake but they even get bigger than a Mexican black king. So they're like kind of right in between like a Mexican black king and say a black indigo snake. So these guys are gonna be cool. I'm raising up about six or seven of them. I cannot wait to share the experience as they get dark with you guys. You guys are gonna love these things. And I haven't updated you guys in a while on these guys here. I mean, they are so tiny. These are those little viper boas. Remember when I got them maybe two months or so ago? So they look really amazing. I mean, look at how cool they are. And this is one of those redder ones. So when it gets bigger, it's gonna be super super nice so uh, they're coming up good most of them are eating some of them are giving us a little bit of problem but these guys are kind of notorious as babies for being a little bit finicky but hey we're getting them going pretty well and they are super neat looking I'm actually raising up probably maybe a hundred or so ball pythons this year, so I'm not going to go through the whole list, just like the colubrids. We've got another hundred or so colubrids I'm raising up, and I don't want to sit here all day and show you every single animal, but I'm just kind of picking here and there for you guys. This thing is absolutely cool. This is actually a firefly Mojave spider. So it's a fire, it's a pastel, it's a Mojave, and it's a spider. And my philosophy when it comes to ball python raising up this year is to really just pick animals that I personally like. You know, sometimes I'm going to work with certain genetics because I think, oh, that genetics is really cool behind it but mostly I'm just looking for stunning animals that I just think are gonna be really cool to look at and this thing is absolutely gorgeous and I've been talking about this animal since I got it this is actually a Mojave bamboo fire cine walma now most of the Mojave bamboos are just solid white and for whatever reason I don't know if it's the cinnamon gene or whatever you can see just a really faint pattern on it and that's what I really love about this animal is the fact that you can just see a faint pattern so the pattern is just so subdued that it's 
really interesting. And in, honestly, in person, there's all kinds of different hues of different colors, some pinks and yellows and different things coming through. I mean, this thing is freaking awesome. This is another one that is not only beautiful, but also kind of a powerhouse as far as genetics goes. And this is actually a Pastel Lesser Enchi Bongo. So the Bongo gene is what's the real powerhouse. I mean, the other animals are awesome too. But again, when it comes to this one, I'm more raising up just because I think it's freaking beautiful. And I've also showed you this guy a ton of times. Of course, this is Smiley the Piebald Ball Python. Definitely raising this one up along with a bunch of other cool piebald. Here's one that I absolutely love. This is that spider calico that I've got. They sometimes call them calendars and they are just so freaking amazing. Definitely raising this one up really just because I think it's beautiful. Genetically it's cool but it has nothing to do with that. It just is the fact that I want to open up a cage and see this animal for a long 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 time because I just think it's gorgeous. And another gorgeous snake of course is this spider clown ball python. I mean look at that freaking animal right there. That thing is so uber clean. I mean this combination together I love it. I love spider stuff. I love clown stuff but when you put them together and you just get that uber Super small amount of patterning and that unbelievably clean look to them. Holy moly, that's a good one. And of course you guys know that I'm raising up all these animals like Perdita here or Snap, Crackle and Pop and Verde and the list goes on and on and on. And you know, it makes me wonder a little bit about this because where does a snake or a reptile in my collection become a breeder or a pet? And you know, that's a really blurry line to be honest with you because you know I don't know that I look at any of my animals that I keep and think of them as just a breeder right like oh well they're not a pet they're a breeder you know, I look at all the animals kind of the same, to be honest with you. I mean, sure, some I've told you before are my animal ambassadors. And as a matter of fact, I'm probably going to do a vlog here in the next week or so, just highlighting all of what I consider my animal ambassadors. You guys are always asking me for updates. And when something isn't in the vlog for a week or two, you're always like, what happened to so-and-so? So I figure I'll do a vlog just on my animal ambassadors. But the fact is, outside of the fact that I kind of call them my ambassadors, and they're certainly more considered just pets, not breeders, just pets, the truth is, is that even if they're breeders, it doesn't mean that I look at them any less or have any less love for them because the truth is is that I want to love all my animals and I've always said that like if there ever comes a time when I have a collection of snakes and I no longer look at them as living animals, each individual animal is probably when I'll stop working with animals and that goes back to what I said a long time ago how I downsized about two and a half years ago from a much larger facility with lots more snakes to where I'm at now because I kind of started to feel like I was losing that intimacy with with each of the animals. I no longer could connect with things because I had so much stuff and I didn't like it to be totally honest with you. So I don't know, let, let me know in the comments what you think about that is when it comes to a breeder, whether you're breeding birds or fish or reptiles or whatever the case may be, is there a point where you think that it's not the same as keeping them as a pet? Do you not care for them? I don't, I don't know, it's never been that way for me but I'm really curious to think how you feel not only about maybe my situation but other people that you see. So I'm gonna be honest with you guys, you know, with some of the emotional stress that I've gone on with a whole bunch of things that I've shared with you guys over the last couple days. It really was therapeutic to just kind of spend the majority of the day here with my animals, looking at cages, playing with stuff. I didn't do a lot of work, I'm going to be honest with you. Today was just about emerging myself in animals and, and that's really my out. That's my oasis, you know, that's where I want to go when I'm just feeling a little bit overwhelmed or something. Quite frankly, having the vlog is therapeutic too, so thank you guys for coming along with me on this journey and I hope that today we kind of return to some fun and some upbeat attitude and we also are learning together that bad Bad things can happen and they do happen in life but that doesn't mean that we can't rise above it and you have to understand that it's okay to feel down it's okay to cry it's okay to feel hopeless for a short period of time it's not about not allowing yourself to do those things it's about how you respond to them it's, it's the fact that you don't want that to steal your happiness you don't want that to steal your ability to achieve the things that you want to achieve. So don't feel bad if you wake up in the morning and you feel a little bit down. Or don't feel bad if, if something happens in your life and that situation makes you really sad. It's okay to have feelings. Everyone has feelings. Anyone that says that they're happy all the time is just lying to you. But the fact is is that we can get beyond that. You know, we can we can realize that 
every day is going to get better and, and, and even when things are really bad, there's always brightness in the future. So I hope that this vlog helps you see that that's a possibility and that it will happen. And no matter how bad of a time I'm having recently, I can still smile and I can enjoy things that I want to surround myself. So in reality, maybe that's all you need is to surround yourself with things that make you happy. And with that said, I am going to go ahead and end the vlog here and kind of take the rest of the day to continue to emotionally heal from this last little bit. Trust me, I'm going to be fine. Thank you guys for all your support. It was really scary to release that video the other day and not know what kind of response it was going to get. And certainly there are people that are going to continue to hate and tear things apart. But so many of you said so many amazing things. Thank you so much for it. You guys mean the world to me. Your support is amazing. And without you, I would be lost. So thank you so much. I love you guys. Can you do me a couple favors before we get out here? Can you smash that like button as well as turn those post notifications on so you know when I upload a video which is every day, seven days a week at nine o'clock in the morning Eastern Standard Time. Remember to be kind to someone today and I promise I'm going to see you guys tomorrow.